Apple has just announced their annual worldwide developers conference, WWDC dub dub if you're OG. And here's what they had to say. Call to code and we've got the Swift logo, a really cool, almost Hunger Games inspired version of the Swift logo, the bird, which represents Apple's modern programming language, the one that they introduced to replace or at least supersede Objective-C many, many years ago now and the one more of their technology is focusing on both with Swift itself and with Swift UI. So you've got that giant sigil, which is a pretty big departure from the friendlier, uh, the funnier even Memoji coders that Apple's been using with past years. And of course with like glasses, reflections and everything that every Apple event, everyone assumes has to be about VR. So this is just code front and center. And it says, join developers worldwide from June 6th to 10 for an inspiring week of technology and community. Get a first look at Apple's latest platforms and technologies in sessions. Explore the newest tools and tips and connect with Apple experts in labs and digital lounges, all online and at no cost. And I think, you know, actually that's really smart, keeping WWDC online, especially given sort of the super spreader that we've seen happen after other recent events where you know people did come together and a lot of people did get sick. And now we already have Omicron 2, the sequel nobody wanted, the worst sequel ever, uh, causing closings in China. Uh, and long COVID is still an absolute nightmare for a lot of people. So I think playing it smart, playing it safe was absolutely the right move. Although it looks like Apple is doing a tiny bit of hybrid IRL because they say in addition to the online conference, Apple will host a special day for developers and students at Apple Park on June 6th to watch the keynote and State of the Union videos together. So WWC really has two keynotes, the public one that Tim Cook comes out and sometimes there's new hardware, sometimes there's not, but then we get the big announcements of all the operating systems. And then afterwards we have the developer State of the Union, which is much more on the nitty gritty technical details. And that's hosted typically by Craig's team, you know, Andreas and, and Sebastian and just, you know, everybody inside Apple who's worked on all the stuff that everybody outside Apple is gonna be working on for the next many months until release sometime this fall. And they say space is limited and details on how to apply to attend will be provided soon. So beyond all that, what can we actually expect? Well, DubDub mostly focuses on software, but only mostly. Some years that means only software, like 2021 and 2018. Other years we get previews like Apple Silicon in 2020 and the last Intel Mac Pro in 2019. But other years, other years it's all about the hardware, all of it, like 2017 with iMac, iMac Pro, MacBook Pro, iPads Pro, just all the pros and the HomePod. This year, we've already gotten the new iPhone SE, iPad Air, and Mac Studio with Studio Display, but Apple did promise one more product to go, Mac Pro. And since we got sneak peeks of the last two Mac Pros at DubDub, why not go for the three-peat in 2022? And more on other potential new hardware in a minute, because the safest bet in the business right now are previews and initial betas for iOS 16, iPadOS 16, tvOS 16, macOS lucky number 13, and watchOS 9. Also, potential updates for the AirPods, like we got spatial audio and conversation boosts in the last couple of WWDCs. And who knows, now that the studio display also runs iOS, maybe Apple could update that. As to what we're gonna see in all of those big new updates, there have been almost no credible leaks. We do know that Apple's been on work from home for the last couple of years, and that may complicate things for such a notoriously on-site company as Apple. Also, this year, the European Union is pushing hard for both sideloading on iOS and interoperability between iMessage and other platforms like WhatsApp. And moving Gatekeeper from the Mac to the iPhone and iPad would take some time, but making all messaging apps work together without breaking end-to-end -end encryption for everyone, which, you know, the cynic in me says may at least be part of the actual intent here, could take next to an engineering miracle. So I'm just not gonna expect anything on either of those things until later in the year at the earliest. Personally though, I'm hoping for more, better and easier customizations on iOS, up to and including a real actual theme kit and maybe a hint of richer textures again. I mean, why should the hardware keep getting all the retro nostalgia fun? And I know, I know all the Nerdimus Primes among us just won't be happy until iPad OS is basically Mac OS, but the iPad was created specifically for the mainstream market. The one that felt traditional computers, including Mac OS, 
were just too intimidating and inaccessible. So I'd personally prefer if Apple let the iPad remain the mainstream iPad and focused on making macOS better suited for the modern Mac nerd needs. Even if I would seriously high key still love multi-user for families on the iPad and stat. Also, can we please get messaging and sharing on tvOS? I can send a text from my HomePod, but I can't share what I'm watching from my Apple TV 15 years since launch and 10 years since relaunch. Help me help you help others find more better stuff to watch, <laughs> please and thank you. For watch OS, you know, of course there'll be new workouts, there'll be new health features. What I'm really still most interested in is for the Apple Watch to finally go independent, to be just wrist loose and iPhone free, the way the iPhone got detethered from the Mac and PC and iTunes with iOS 5. I'm hoping we can finally get there. We'll have technology enough to finally get there with watch OS 9. Other hardware we could possibly see, but probably won't yet, are the Mac Mini Pro and iMac Pro, which are either waiting on M2 Pro variants or for Apple to see how much of those markets the Mac Studio fills for now, or both. Also the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro and the big, well, the small one, but the big one, the M2 MacBook Air redesign that a lot of us have been drooling over for a long while now. Also, we got the Pro Display XDR back at Dub Dub 2019, and we just got the studio display last month. So it'd be really cool to see Pro Display XDR 2.0, maybe with actual real mini LED this time. And if Apple can stuff enough data down DisplayPort 1.4 with display stream compression, and you can actually get a panel made that supports it, it'd be really nice to see ProMotion at 5K, 6K, 7K, just uh, hopefully not 7K for 7K. But of course, of course, the multi-trillion dollar company question remains, will we get our first glimpse of ROS, Apple's reality operating system for the long rumored virtual and mixed reality headset? Think like Oculus Quest, but with Apple industrial design, Apple class silicon inside, and running something like Apple TV style content for entertainment, education, fitness, gaming, and more. If Apple is planning to launch that in the fall, then previewing it at DubDub makes all the kind of sense that does. It would give developers time to ramp up apps and games and all sorts of experiences, and also just reduce the risk of the FCC or the Eastern European version thereof of ruining the surprise and delight for Apple and everybody. But, quad major but, if Apple is only planning on launching the headset next year, we may not even get a preview until the fall, if not next year. Which I think is fine overall because there's no rush to market here. Everything is still super early days and I'd rather get it right than just get it right now, especially since it usually takes Apple like two versions to really start nailing any new product category anyway. And I have got a ton, a swift coded, not really swift coded, but a ton of previews up for you to watch ad free and sponsor free on Nebula, along with my exclusive new studio tour series where I just posted episode three, lighting, alongside episode two, mics and sound, and episode one, cameras, and I'm working on episode four, sets, right now. Basically everything that all of you have been asking me for, because on Nebula, a bunch of your favorite education creators, we have the absolute luxury of making videos that don't have to be optimized for YouTube, including bonus and extended versions of our videos that I know the nerdiest, just most hardcore of you will absolutely love all ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula and bundled in for free when you sign up with today's sponsor at curiositystream.com slash Renee or just click the link below. And right now, today, because you're watching this video, you can get Curiosity Stream on sale for 26% off, less than 15 bucks a year, way, way less than the price of an average meal outside DubDub for the whole entire year. And that includes all of their thousands of amazing documentaries and series including a whole entire category on technology that goes deep, not just into the science behind everything, but the ethics of all the stuff that we're racing to invent so always now. It is the absolute best way to support educational creators directly and just the best damn deal in streaming today. For over 26% off Curiosity Stream, less than $15 a year and Nebula bundled in for free. Just click the button on the screen or go to curiositystream.com slash Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for more, just way more and everything to expect at WWDC and beyond. Just hit up that playlist and I'll see you in the next video.